everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adina and for today's video I will be reacting to BTS Idol explained by a Korean. <laughs> this is created by the channel DKDK TV again just like how Dang was created, you know, Dang explained by a Korean was also created by them so I am so excited to get into this. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of things that us international fans, you know, missed because we're not uh, aware of certain aspects of the Korean culture, but I'm interested in seeing what they, you know, point out to us and what they explain and things that they explain that I may have already known. That would be interesting. <laughs> but yeah, let's get straight into the video in 3, 2, 1, play. BTS's new MV Idol is making everybody go nuts. So much things are going around and of course there are already a lot of attempts to decipher it or link it to previous theories. But rather than going into theories and unverified speculations, in today's video I will try to stay even more true to the MV and the lyrics itself. There will be mainly two parts. First, the lyric and MV dissection and second, the Korean cultural references. So without further ado, let's go into the MV and lyric dissection. Can't call me artist. Can't call me Artist, idol, I don't care. RM is saying that he doesn't give a shit about what people call him by anymore. But one thing to notice is, when he's saying 아니면 또 다른 뭐라 해도, he comically dances to Sai's new face choreography. So apparently, he doesn't care how many new faces he has. In the latter part of the MV, look at what the choreography looks like. You saw it, right? But let's try to chop this lyric into a different way again. Let's stop the lyrics at I don't, without the care. Not only does it sound exactly like idol, connecting it with the second line that comes before it, it becomes like this. So if you try to chop the lyrics in that way, it would have the meaning of, whatever you choose to call me, aren't you going to call me an idol again? This is called a tapjongno situation in Korean, which means you've already set your own answer inside your head. So anyways. rhetorical question. So as you might know, in <laughs> Korea, hip hop artists or singers that are in idol groups are not taken seriously, and they're actually looked down upon. While RM right. said that he doesn't care about what other people call him anymore, at the same time he's trying to criticize these people that call them this and that, or maybe labeling them as idols. These lyrics are pretty self-explanatory. J-Hope is proud of whatever he is, and most importantly, he's free. He has no irony anymore of who he is because he's always just himself. But one thing we should focus here are the artifacts that have been sitting on the table since the beginning of the MV. On the table, we see two things, a sailor ship and a globe. And now, there's an airplane in the background. As J-Hope addresses in his song Airplane 2, the airplane, globe, and ship all represent their current status the freedom they have now, and pride for global success slash influence. In this part of the MV, it's natural to have questions about what the drawings in the background actually mean. The drawings seem to be watched by many people and surveillance cameras, and the lyrics are talking about how haters are talking about BTS. Nobody but the members that drew the drawings themselves would actually know the true meaning behind the pictures, but relating to the lyrics, we can guess that it's something like a message towards haters. Maybe it's what BTS members think haters are like, or what they think haters might think of BTS themselves. Suga's drawing is pretty clear. A huge BT21 Shuki is crushing haters with his hands. It also has Ilsam, Ilpar, which are references from Dang. <laughs> being the ultimate car pairs in the game's hotta. The numbers could also mean their debut year 2013 when they started from the ground, but and now in 2018 they are this big. But Jin's picture is kind of hard to understand. He's drawn a kore, which means whale, whale. in Korean. Yeah. Nobody but Jin will know the actual meaning of this, but to just speculate, kore is a slang for two meanings in Korean. First, a very powerful slash rich person or group. It's a word used especially a lot in stock market terms. The second slang meaning of kore is actually a dick. Who knows, he might have been responding to the people chattering about this incident. Or su, 
two is the sound Koreans make when they're excited in traditional old folk music. Jiwaja <laughs> technically means a song that people sing when the nation is thriving or peaceful. But in short, it's just another sound Koreans make when they're excited and to boost up the rhythm and good feeling of the song. <laughs> is basically a beat used in a specific Korean rhythm called Gukkori Jangdan. And for the visuals used in this part, this is the Chinese that. character Sarang E, which means love. And in the latter part of the MV, there's also a part when Jungkook yeah, appears, and sarang. the word Sarang is actually written in Korean. In this scene, Jimin stands out among the whirlpool of BTS members. Which could imply that even though BTS is a group and all the members rotate around me, and a lot of people actually talk about us only in a set, nevertheless, I acknowledge my own existence and I stand out as a unique being. Thus, I love myself. <laughs> Face Off is a famous movie directed by famous movie yes. director Oh Sam. In the movie, the main characters who are an FBI agent and a terrorist get to change their faces. As RM mentioned earlier about new faces, J-Hope is also referencing the movie to show that they can be called or changed into a totally different person. Like his next lyrics state, he can be sometimes a superstar or a superhero. Suga, Jungkook, and V all say they have so many different people inside them, but they notice that they are all parts of themselves too, so they decide to accept them and love themselves. Plus, you can notice in V's lyric, 고민보다는 그냥 달리네, is a reference from their song, 고민보다 고, which has the message of YOLO. basically means haters or people are talking shit about them like blah 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 this and that these two lines are a form of sarcasm that only Koreans will understand and no are both panmar which is informal speech but in the lyrics they attach sho and hasho which is a traditional form of honorific called chundemmar so the sentence here wow. is a mix of informal and honorific it's like speech they Thus, sentences like kind of insult them and then add on like politeness at the end. criticizing or being sarcastic towards people who think highly of themselves. But one more thing to notice in the MV again is the bunny in the moon. This comes from a Korean mythology that a rabbit on the moon is making the medicine for immortality. Thus, the rabbit on the moon stands for prosperity and immortality in the Korean or East Asian culture. But why suddenly immortality? Because there's a saying in Korean, 욕을 많이 먹으면 오래 산다. It means if you get ah. cursed a lot, you live long. The lyrics of this wow. part says people are saying all kinds of shit to BTS. So in conclusion, regarding the amount of shit BTS received, they will have immortality and prosperity. Just another like fun that. thing. Rabbit in Korean is called Tokki. And in this part, you can hear BTS singing yeah. in the background. <laughs> A giant shark tries to attack BTS, but they are unaffected, and they keep on singing You Can't Stop Me Loving Myself. They don't care about the fact that a big shark in the bag is trying to eat them up, but rather they enjoy the situation by saying Now onto the second part. There are so many Korean traditional references in this MV. The traditional clothing hanbok, the Korean house kiwatjib, the tiger which stands for Korea, the moon rabbit, the Korean fan dance, the word love, and the traditional lion dance called Pukchong Sajanorum. Actually, this dance was done during the full moon, which has the meaning of warding off all bad luck or ghosts, and celebrating to bring prosperity and unity to the village. Furthermore, you can see that the choreographies were also affected by the traditional Korean dance moves like the head spinning dance, Sangmodol. By these references, you can see that BTS is bluntly rebutting the criticism of them being westernized and focusing more overseas. Right. At the end of the MV, if you see very carefully, you can see that the globe has changed from South America to where you can see Korea. 
Also, on a side note, you can see the sun rising in the beginning and lots of other times during the MV, along with the shining moon. And, and the sun also goes that. down at the end. The sun, paired up with the artifacts, the globe, and the sailboat, kind of remind me of the Hega Chiji Annenara, the empire on which the sun never sets, which was a term to describe the Spanish or British Empire in the past when they had so many colonies all over the world. Connected to the earlier references uh, about the moon's okay. prosperity and immortality, the sun also represents the fact that BTS is so global that their fandoms are everywhere around the world, which makes them a so, cultural right. superpower empire uh, where the sun oh. never sets. At that's the end cool. of the MV, the sun actually does not completely go down, which means, despite the Love Yourself series might have come to an end, they still have so much time and new stuff to show us in the future. Lastly, as the director's comment, I think that the colorful, crazy, distracting style of the MV and the clothes they wore all stand for accepting every single side of you, promoting diversity, accepting differences throughout the world, ultimately by loving yourself. I love that. Thank you again, TKDKTV, for making these explained videos because it's really helpful. <laughs> okay, so there were a few things in there that I did know and other things that I partly knew and then some things that I did not know at all. Um, I did know about the little, like, myth about the, the rabbit in the moon, but I didn't know, like, very specific details about it. Like, um, I didn't know that it was there as, like, representing immortality. I didn't know that. Um, and I didn't know the saying about how, um, people who get cursed a lot live long, stuff like that. I didn't know that. Which I really enjoyed because, you know, it, it just makes you appreciate the song so much more. I feel like if you were a person who didn't really get the song the first time when you first saw it and you like didn't like the music video and it was just too much for you, I feel like watching something like this will make you appreciate it more and understand it more because this explains everything and it doesn't just look like a bunch of colors and a bunch of random things happening because it's not. It never really is with BTS. There's always some deeper meaning and sometimes, you know, being international fans, sometimes you just don't get it. And you try to figure stuff out, and you might figure some things out, but most of the time you're missing so much. So videos like these really help a lot, and it was great. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> but that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below other videos you'd like me to react to. And if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next video. Bye! <laughs>